Hello and welcome back to the Only Aki's channel for today's preview of the Air Cup game on Tuesday night. We are joined, as always, by Brandon and David. We're going to be discussing the Falkirk game that happened. Uh, it was our second one, two out of two, and looking ahead, of course, to Tuesday night. David, we'll start with you. You were at the game uh, on Falkirk. You represented Only Aki's at the game. Um, we didn't have the greatest of streams at the stadium, we'll be honest. Uh, but how did Aki's look to you in person? Um, It was... It was a frustrating game. I mean, in, in hindsight, getting the result is definitely deserved. We played well, I think. Despite his pass that led to the goal, I think Sean Warren and Jamie Hamilton did very well. Um, I don't think, apart from that goal, um, which I think is more of a concentration thing than anything, that I think we dealt with them very well. Um, even in the moments we let Falkirk in the game, I don't think they had... It was evident they didn't have the quality that we did. Um, I, I think we did well. Um, I think it was a, a fair result. We deserved it. It was nice to see that we came back um, and turned the result around. But I think the biggest thing I took away from that is it's my first time in memory when I've seen Brian Rice make changes that completely changed the game because we were 1 0 down um, having lost the first half, missed a ton of good chances. I think we should have been doing a lot better. I didn't see us coming back. And then the introduction of Andy Ryan changed everything. So it's nice to see that we've got, like Ray said, the character. Um, because let's face it, we're only two games into the season. We are going to get better. The fact that we've won the first two games already, that's a great sign. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, I mean, we spoke yesterday at the stadium and Andy Ryan was one you picked out as well as, as many other fans is changing the game. Um, he didn't get long, but the impact was huge, winning the penalty, and of course, um, one of the factors of our second goal as well. He's came in and people have um, they've been a bit sceptical to sign him because he's been with us before. He wasn't particularly that great when he was with us before. He was our most used sub um, appearance holder, um, and he's went down the, sort of, the leagues in Scotland. And don't get me wrong, he scored goals. Um, but it's been at a lower level, so that's been why fans have been a bit sceptical. But he's came on, he's added something completely different to any sort of striker or forward that we had last season, in my opinion. Um, he was running at people. Um, and it, it makes a difference that you're making a sub and you're actually quite happy about the sub yeah. and you're thinking this could perhaps do something. Usually when we make a sub, you're like, mm, you know, do you know what I mean? But no, he came on, he won as a penalty. Um, he was a general nuisance and he, he, he did it. He, the change won as the game. Um, and like David says, it's it's nice to see actually see us come back and win a game from getting beat. Um, you can't say that much in the past couple of years that we've um, been getting beaten. We've came back and won, regardless if it's an opposition team that's um, below us. I think the big thing to take away, though, is when I say we've turned the game around, now, I don't have it to hand, but the, the sending off was in like 82 minutes. You know what I mean? Now, obviously, the penalty was immediately after, but we only had the best part of 10 minutes after that to go for the winner. Now, there's times where, especially last season, given that's Premiership football, we just don't look like scoring. But we only had a short window to go chase that and change a result, and we did. Um, and that's where a lot of big players missing as well. So I think it's incredibly encouraging. It's very encouraging. Um, I didn't mention it yesterday, but um, I to come back and win a game and to come back and win a game in such a short period of time when you've got so little time left to actually change it, um, I hopefully it speaks volumes. Um, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Uh, I don't think they should get too ahead of themselves because if we're being honest, the opposition have been of lower level. Um, but the past cut, couple of years in cup, cup competitions we've not done that sort of thing and we've always started off both the cup and the league very poorly and we've saw how that's panned the rest of the year out so hopefully with these two first first two wins and our first two competitive matches we keep this keep this going on and we start the league well who knows what can happen yeah, exactly well, that's something I was going to pick out there was you said they're a lower opposition but those are the these are the type of games that Previously, we've lost and been embarrassed in. And uh -huh. as you said, it's just, it's kicked off a whole negative spree of games mm -hmm. from then. So let's hope the positivity stays. And um, I, a lot of folk have said Falkirk are their League One winner and, and they, they should be running away with it. 
Um, I don't know if I agree with that or not, um, but they certainly will be up there. So it would be beating the team that's one of the favourites in the league below you. Um, and in my opinion, fairly comfortable, despite what the scoreline was. Um, if, if we had a better striker, or if we um, if we had somebody that can knows how to take their chances, we we win that easy. And I think another point I want to talk on that will lead us on to um, both the air game and the Albion Rovers game is we're creating all these chances by the law of averages. We owe somebody a doing. We <laughs> surely owe somebody a doing. We're creating all these chances and not putting them away. Surely we owe somebody a doing. Yeah, Definitely. I agree. I agree. Um, a player I want to pick out, and David, I will be coming to you for this, um, is Lewis Spence. He got his full debut, uh, replacing Nikima Dolphin, obviously wasn't in the squad at all. And he seemed to kind of fall directly into what, when I spoke to Scunthorpe fans and Ross County fans, he seemed to fall straight into that. You know, they said he's not a player who's going to stand out, but he's a player who's going to give you 100% every week. And to, from what I could see in, in the stream, he did seem like a kind of natural Scott Martin replacement uh, while Scott Martin's away. Had an engine, uh, like I said, played the full 90 at 100% and wasn't the most creative going forward, but wasn't as deep lying as a Kima Dolphin cleaning up. And David, I'm wondering if you watch him in person, did you maybe notice any differences uh, in him to Scott Martin? Or, you know, how do you see him as a player in his first game? Oh, well, uh, to be fair, any time... I noticed him. I had that quote from the Scunthorpe fan you mentioned in mind because there are times during the game where you really didn't even remember he was there. So it, it, it doesn't grab the spotlight in any way, but he's very neat and tidy. Couple, there's a couple of really strong challenges and one ultimately got him the booking. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can see him being that kind of guy that you've got to keep an eye on with the, obviously accumulating the bookings. Um but yeah, it it, it's, it it doesn't grab the spotlight like a Hakeem Adolphin, um, but he, he really is a he looks a good player. He looks like he will be of the quality we need for the championship, and he looks very like tenacious and very scrappy like a Scott Martin. So I think it's going to be a good signing. Um, I think he did well yesterday, um, given the the debut he's had. So yeah, um, a good good signing by looks it. And let's, let's look ahead to the air game on Tuesday night, cup game. Brandon, what kind of game are you expecting? Are you expecting a tougher task than Falkirk, given that air are a championship team? Um, or are you, as you said, are you expecting us um, to deliver a, a doing, as, as we're expected to do soon? Um, I don't think this will be the doing. Um, I think it will be. It's going to be a tough game. Um, they'll probably be up, be up for this match. Most have been up for it any of the three matches is what you'd think um, but in saying that we played them last season and we, we beat them fairly comfortably when arguably we it was a lot poorer circumstances you could argue that um, very so, comfortable and it was very comfortable it was probably the most comfortable game the full of last season as you will hear from Marcus um, he's certainly up for it he'll be wanting to prove a point and I'm sure a lot of their players will be wanting to prove a point against um, a team they've played last year and also a team they're going to be playing on a regular basis in the championship. I don't really know how this one is going to go because you can't really gauge how from their results that they've already had. They've drew, but then Albion Rovers have obviously got the additional point and penalties. Um, and they've beat Edinburgh City comfortably. But then you look at Falkirk's results, Falkirk hammered Albion Rovers. And um, many people are saying Albion Rovers are absolutely horrendous for what they've saw. And... Um, a few of my mates actually watched the air game at Albion Rovers and the Hill at Albion Rovers and says um, Albion Rover, uh, sorry, air were terrible. But then they've went and beat the team we only beat 1 0, 3 0. So you can't really gauge. So um, uh, you can't, you don't want to compare these games to friendlies because they really are just sort of competitive friendlies, if you will. But with friendlies, you don't know where the results are going to go. I think this is the most important game in all the the group games that we have for the reasons you've said. I mean, Brandon said that this will be the game we're most excited for. I think by the same respect, that will be the same for Aki's. Um I mean, the, the thing that I really noticed when speaking to Jamie Hamilton yesterday, uh, there is a right buzz about the team. They really are enjoying the different style of play and getting a lot more of the ball. 
I think it's like you say, the first two results are incredibly positive that we have got players missing and we have beaten teams. Now, people might say you only beat it with City 1-0, but I a team that, let's face it, don't play a lot of football. Air will play a lot more football, leave themselves a lot more exposed, exactly like Falkirk did yesterday. We need to start taking our chances more, and I think that we will, because I think we learned the lessons from the Air United game, and that reflected in some of the performances yesterday. And I think it'll be the same again against the I think we will be looking to be a lot more clinical because one of the things Brian Rice said is that that game could have been put to bed before half time. So, like Brandon said, I think we're, we're due a doing 13. Um, and I think it is coming. I think the game management is getting better. And it's probably because we're playing at a lower level now that we're seeing it a lot more. Is we're learning our lessons and getting better. I mean, it's early days, but I'm. I'm excited for this game. I think we really could get a statement here. Not necessarily me or doing, but I think we could get a comfortable win and that will give the fans especially a lot of confidence going into the league season. Um, just before we hand over to the interview, I'll quickly get your guys' score predictions as we do, see where we're sitting. Uh, David, I'll start with you in case your phone dies. I'm, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say 3-0. Okay, okay, very confident. Brandon? 3-0, Lackies. Wow. Okay, I'm going to be slightly less confident. I'm going to say two 0 Hamilton. Um, I got the full quick result. Uh, the full quick result, right? So let's hope I get this one, this one right as well. But thank you guys for watching. We hope you did enjoy. We get the opportunity to speak to current air player and former Hamilton player Marcus Fjortoft, who gave us a really interesting insight into how that move from Hamilton came around, and also gave us fans a different view on why it maybe didn't work out for him at Hamilton, how that leap of, leap of quality was so big uh, and how it just maybe didn't happen at Hamilton. But subsequently, he's went on and had successful season at Morton and he's now at Ayr. Uh, we get the chance to speak uh, about those moves, about his relationship with David Hopkins uh, and, of course, the Hamilton game on Tuesday night, what he thinks of it uh, and looking ahead to the season, his personal goals and that of the team. It was a really interesting interview. We thank him a lot for his time. It was great to speak to him. He, of course, has his own podcast. I'll leave linked in the description. It's a really interesting listen, um, and I would definitely recommend it. But thank you guys for watching. We hope you did enjoy, and we'll see you after the game on Tuesday. Hello, and welcome back to the Only Aki's channel. We're joined today by air player Marcus Fjortoft to talk about today's game in the Cup. Marcus, first of all, how are you doing, man? How are you feeling? I'm doing all right, uh, Ben. Uh, pleasure to be joining you, uh, David and Brandon. Uh, to uh, you know, back at uh, back to talk about Aki's and uh, and and my time in Scottish football. So it's nice. I'm doing all right. Had a very chill Sunday. So uh, yeah, and then looking forward to the game on Tuesday. Obviously, good man. Glad to hear it. And, I mean, let's let's talk about your time at Hamilton because how did that move come around? Because it's not something you see a lot in Scottish football. You know, somebody who's went through soccer, um, football scholarship in America, playing in New Zealand, who then makes their way to to Hamilton. So how did that move come around? Oh yeah, I agree. It's it's very unconventional, and I think my career in and of itself has been very unconventional. Um, you know, uh, starting or being a pro late on because of my time in America. Um, I've always said I think I'd struggle to be in an academy setting in the UK because I've always seen myself as a late bloomer. Even now, I feel like I'm developing. Uh, Twenty seven, um, and so uh, you know, I for me the right move was going to America for four years to develop there. To grow into a man basically you know I grew I was in the center back until I was 16 I didn't start growing until I was 16 you know trying to figure that all out and so for me it was perfect and I've always been of the conviction that uh, developing as a person as cliche as it sounds but developing as a person I think develops you as a player as well and so for me it was a great uh, experience being in America doing those four years there and growing for each year and uh, assume more and more responsibility and playing against good players uh, popular or contrary to popular belief um and then i went and uh, sought new adventures um and used in football to see the world i went to new zealand because why not <laughs> why can't i have a, a see use new zealand and have that as home while using that as football i think it's fantastic uh you know what football what doors football can open for you and that was uh, you know a great motivation for myself while at the root of it all uh, you want to develop as a player uh, as well and so when I saw my, my good friend and my, my, still my roommate, Kieran McKenna, who was at Akis as well, 
um, he was a Falkirk and he went, he was in the same school as me um, and uh, same school as me. And he left a year after and he went to sign for Falkirk and he, and he, and he started playing like pretty much immediately. And that was my reference. I said, well, if Kieran can do it, then, you know, then I can, no, because I've played against him and Kieran's a great player, but you know, you can't compare yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I reached out to his dad and, uh, and I got a trial with, uh, with Hamilton um, and just went thrice right from New Zealand. And to say that the step up was, was steep is, is I think is an understatement. Uh, but I got a three week trial. Um, Brian Rice, Chipper was, he, he was great with me. He said, listen, I'll give you three weeks, settle in. And after the three weeks, I think that was in April or something, I was offered something. So um, it's a wild ride, it's very unconventional. Um, but I like, the, I like the unconventionality. I like the randomness of it all. You know, it's something I think that's, uh, underlying my, my career. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then I've, I've stayed since, which I didn't think, but here we are. So when obviously you done your trial, Aki's and, and you, you were offered something, obviously mm-hmm. Aki's season was still going on at that point. Um, with being offered that there was uncertainty of whether Aki's would be in the top flight or the championship at that point? Was that something mm-hmm. that ever sort of played in your mind um, about the possibility of where you actually would be playing, playing when you came that following season? Uh, I think, uh, Brandon, there are pros and cons. You know, I think uh, looking at the... It's not fun going down, but at the same time, if you see the, the, the current young squad at Hamilton, it opens opportunities for other for other players and something that might, well, benefit the club in the long term. Um, and I think, you know, it was... I was buzzing to be back in Scottish or to be in Scottish football and excuse uh, generalizing, but British football in general, because I'm, I'm born there. I, I really feel attached to it. the football culture. It's my, you know, it's the best in the world. Um, and so for me to be there and, and try and establish myself and, and get a shot at it, just get my foot in the door, I think was my greatest motivation. And then um, I could deal with whatever, um, whatever, you know, presented itself uh, thereafter. But I was obviously following very intently. It's super cool. Uh, it was super cool that we stayed in the Premiership because you want to be amongst the best. And and that season we stayed up deservedly so as well. And was there a big culture shock to come over? Like, how long did it take you to adjust to the different style of play? Uh, obviously, being around a whole different group of players. Um, mm-hmm. so how did you settle in? How did you find that? Well, first of all, I went to school with Kieran, so I understood the Scottish patter. Like that, that was, I think that was key <laughs> to begin with, because he goes to America. People say, people told him, uh, they said, I understand English is your second language and stuff like that. And he's like, no, no, this is my accent. Like, this is how I talk English. And they're like, oh, really? Like, that's how it was in America. So that helped understanding that. So that was no problem getting the banter and stuff like that. Um, and, but in general, if we're talking about transition, of course, it was a steep learning curve. And when I look back, was I ready? Maybe not. But, I, but because of that, it's a bit of the chicken and the egg syndrome. You know, like, do you, do, you get the, do, you, um, do you get the chance and then develop? Or do you develop well enough and then get the chance? For me, my way was like I had to be thrown into it to develop. And when I look back, an extreme steep learning curve. I mean, obviously, because I was from America, New Zealand. And yes, you can say, oh, you're 25, blah, blah. But you're always a sum of your experiences. And so for me, being in America, that was a great reference for me. And I always say that I, I was very well educated with my degrees and stuff like that. But when I come to a, a Scotland and transition to a playing style and, and, you know, playing against better players, then I'm suddenly the most uneducated there, if you get me. And so mm-hmm. that, that, that's with every walk of life, whether when, for you lads, if you go into a different setting as well. And so that would obviously was a transition uh, in the beginning and arguably now if you compare me now to when I got there I'm a lot better player and that's much to do with the fact that I have that experience I know how the game is played I know the rhythm I know what they want and I've learned I've grown tremendously as, as a player because of that because it was tough in the beginning uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly so. So as, you, as you've already mentioned you were sort of thrown in the deep end there's in Scottish football, there's not a bigger deep end than playing against Celtic and Rangers, which a couple of the biggest clubs in Europe. So, as you say, it was always going to be sort of tough initially. But now you've had that experience, do you feel that it's something that you that you that motivates you to perhaps get that experience again? 
in the near future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's 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 funny because I look back and maybe now I'd be ready for what I came into then, if you understand. Because I I because I think I've grown so much, I think I would be able to. I'd be a lot better able to handle it. And I had some fantastic experience. I remember making my starting debut against um, against Hearts away, like fifteen thousand. You know, it's 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 completely new to me. But then after a while, you get used to. You have your experience. You have your references. You play more games under your belt. It's just that's the way it is. Um, but I was incredibly thankful for for the chance I got, and I grew tremendously under it. Again, back to what I say, like being able to develop through being given the chance. And yeah, sometimes. Some games, you know, I look back at, at certain games where I did well, and then others, you know, you learn. Football's brutal, you know. It's it's, it's you learn from those mistakes. But um, it was undoubtedly a learning experience. And do I wish I could have done more at Hamilton? Of course. Um, but you know, that's that's football. Um, and I think I would be a lot more prepared for that experience and that challenge now, um, simply because of the accumulation of experiences and developing to the Scottish game. So you, you said you've developed a lot over the last couple of years, especially. Mm-hmm. Is obviously a lot of these guys that are playing for Hamilton now don't have any experience in the championship game. Is there any kind of big differences that you could obviously say you've noticed from the championship style to what you've experienced in the Premiership? Well, I think first of all, like that league is it's like one of the craziest leagues as I've been in. Huh? the championship because everyone can beat everyone it's so tight i mean look back at my season with morton uh where we lose out on secure spot uh by goal difference um so it comes down to the very last wire i think that will you it's a notice in terms of it's great entertainment or for great agony for the fans because it's so tight um you know and i think for a club like hamilton uh, who have great young players as well uh, like great lot of skill Maybe, you know, arguably they'll maybe enjoy a bit more of the ball, you know, uh, being more being more in control of games, uh, potentially. I think that could uh, benefit them, absolutely, without getting too much meddled into what, what uh, the staff does. But I think, you know, enjoy that. And there's some great young players coming up. So um, I think that will be, you know, I think that will be fun to see for, for you and for myself, except when you, you play us, obviously. So obviously... It- it wasn't the longest period of time you had, and like you said, you were thrown in the sort of deep end. Um, what would you say was your sort of your ha- your your favourite game being a Hamilton player, um, or or what you felt mm-hmm. uh, you enjoyed most or you performed best in? Well, I mean, I look back and playing against the likes of Rangers and Celtic was great experiences. You know, uh, I remember we played Celtic, we lost one nil, but we were down after one nil after three minutes. I thought, wow, this is going to be a long game, isn't it? <laughs> Um, but it went it went well. It was a great experience um, playing against two fellow Norwegians on the other side. That stands out. I thought playing right Rangers at Ibrox was going to be fun. That was fun for five minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, that's just how it is. Um, but I think also I think for me what stands the most out is is making my uh, debut from start against Hearts away because it kind of it wasn't it was just instinctive that reaction where I said, you know what, everything I've done, everything I've done, you know, was worth it because I went out there and I, I, ma- I made my starting debut in the Scottish Premiership uh, at an arguably a very, a very good stadium, I must say, in terms of the intensity and how uh, over, you know, how overbearing the fans are over the, the, the pitch. I think that was for me, Hila, because it also hit me, you know what, this is worth it. Um, look, this is what I want to do. You don't feel more alive than you do in that moment. And I get, isn't that the feeling we all strive for in, in all we do. I want to touch now on, on your time at Morton. And you said at, at the start that you are su- that you were maybe a bit surprised you're still in the Scottish game. So when you left Hamilton, did you take much convincing uh, to stay in Scotland and go to Morton uh, who were interested in you? I, I, I felt like I, I, I did want to stay in Scotland. And that's because I felt like I could accomplish more. Even, you know, at Hamilton as well, I left at the beginning of that season. I was a totally different player in terms of, you know, confidence has everything to say, self-belief. Uh, maybe first year at Hamilton, I said, I want to play, but I wasn't sure. But in the beginning, I said, but in coming back to the second season, I said, yeah, but now I think I should play. It, it was a different conviction. Yeah. And I knew that from my own development that I had to, when the chances didn't arrive, and that's football. Nothing personal of that. Uh, Brian Rice gave me my chance So in, in Scottish football. So I'll always be thankful for that. Um, 
And so that, that's simply it. I, you know, you want more chances, you want to play. And I felt like I could accomplish more in Scottish football. Uh, I feel like it was a place that could suit me. And when, um, when, when Morton were interested and with David Hopkins, who I, I'm obviously working with now, needless to say, I have a very good relationship with since I went to air as well. Um, you know, the way he, he sold it in and the way he wanted to play me, I just wanted to play regularly. And so I went there and it, it was just like, you know, I'm just desperate to play and have an, have an impact, play regularly. And, and you know, I, I played, I played a fair amount despite, uh, despite the, uh, you know, the, uh, a bit of an unstableness in the, in the background because of three different coaches, obviously. So it, mu- it must have been sort of tough with that inst- instability at Morton, um, but you were a, a, a regular, a first team regular, and you were playing week in, week out, and you just had to look in sort of social media. Um, I think Aki's fans did keep track of yourself, and mm-hmm. when you check when you checked in social media, the Morton fans um, couldn't speak more highly of yourself. Mm-hmm. And so, do you think that obviously going from Hamilton, where you were in the top tier, but you were getting minimal chances, to then go into your second season in Scottish football, be playing week in, week out. Um, although it was a level below, do you think that's continued to make you a better player? No, undoubtedly. And I think, you know, sometimes it's about taking one step back to go two steps forward. I knew that I had to go Morton uh, when they were interested uh, to be back with, with, with David Hopkins and also play regularly. I think for any player, you know, um, it was tough because some of the times you, when you did play at, at Hamilton and then you fans <laughs> argue if, if I was good enough or not, but you want to run up maybe four or five games to, to really get going. If you have a one chance there, one chance there, it, it is tough for any, for any player. And so if you get the chance and under, you know, under, under the circumstances I did, I think it was good because then I could, you know, build a, a momentum to my game and build a confidence um, and that was superb for me. That's exactly what I needed. And I was very well taken, uh, received by the Morton fans. Um, and, uh, you know, even though I left, you know, I, I hope that I didn't burn any bridge because I'm very thankful for, for, uh, for how well they received me. And I had a very good relationship with them. So it was, uh, yeah, it was what I needed. And then, you know, now I'm on to new challenges again. I'm always looking to develop. And I think uh, this is a, a, like being at air now is the great, uh, the, you know, a good next step for me. I'm interested in that relationship with David Hopkins because I read that you said he had a really big impact on you and has helped you develop a lot as a player. And one of the things mm-hmm. you did was he simplified everything for you. I'm wondering what you meant by that. What what specifically he has he done to help you develop personally? Yeah, I mean, if, for those that know that know David Hopkins and the guy for like he's. Um, the way he approaches the game, it's direct. You know, we get it from the back and we get it up front and we build, establish ourselves in the opposition third. And so for me, he looks at me and he says, you know, I'm a big lad. Uh, I can head the ball well. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be a threat of set pieces. And he said, like, this is what I want from you. I want you to head it far. And I want you, every time you get it, I want you to make that certain pass or that pass. And this is what I want from you. If you do that, it will be good. And your positioning here. And I said, okay, if I abide myself to these three main pillars, then I'm given a framework by which I can succeed. And yeah. I, 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 uh, I followed that and it went well. And, we, and I, and then, and I got, I got, you know, uh, I started pretty much every game under him. So it was, it was just that, you know, tr- mutual trust yeah. that, that really benefited me. And the way I looked at the game, because the Scottish game is played differently you know, compared to what I'm used to, compared to the Norwegian school I was used to, compared to America, where I can, maybe you get away with things a bit more. Here it's a dead honest league, whether it's follow your man at all times, whether it's, you know, the ball in the channel, it's a different way of playing. And so with him, I learned how to play the game that way. And, uh, and you know, I think as a, for me, my primary motivation as a player is to develop. And I felt like I developed under him. And that's why when I had the opportunity to go to air under him too, that was just great because I know what I get and I think he he will know he knows what he can get from me while at the same time he knows I can I can develop because I undoubtedly think so I haven't been pro that long either because I don't I don't think uh, uh, I think I'm far from reaching my peak and I think that's a, a it's a good feeling for the sort of air fans that will be tuning in um, what would you say they could expect from yourself this season um, what's your sort of 
goals for the season mm-hmm. and what do you want Air to be doing for the season? Yeah, I mean, it's a crazy league. Everyone can beat everyone. Um, but uh, there's no reason why we should not fight for a playoff spot if we do our job correctly. Uh, I think we will be a hard team to beat and I will aim to contribute to that uh, through my dedication, through my uh, aerial threat, to, uh, with my uh, uh, aggressiveness. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, I'll be a, a good threat of set pieces. I've set myself a goal. Uh, I don't want to say it out loud and because I jinx it, but I want to mm-hmm. contribute some goals. Absolutely. I think, you know, look back at last, se- last season, I had three. I see no reason why I shouldn't have more and I know what I can do better. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I just, you know, I love being part of this football culture. I love it. I love, I can thrive off the passion of the fans. And uh, I think people can see that when I, when I play too. And so, um, yeah, hopefully it will be a, it will be a very uh, productive and successful season. I think um, one thing you mentioned there was just sort of that aerial threat. And although you weren't playing with Hamilton at this point, I think um, one of the <laughs> Aki's fans, um, Favourite moments from yourself in Scottish football was that goal against Muddle you scored? Um, in Motherwell? Yes. Uh, how, yeah. how did that goal feel? Ah, <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. It, was, it would have been, imagine what it, it would have been like with the fans. Yeah. Um, but it was crazy because we played a good game and it was nil nil. And, uh, and then the 119th minute, Stephen O'Donnell scored. And uh, I remember them. And then it was going back and forth, giving and all that. And I said, oh, fuck me. Like, because we, we deserve to get a result, you know? Mm. And they would have been led to Hibs at Easter Road for the next round. And then the gap at the time, Gus McPherson, he said, okay, Marcus, go up. We hit a long, long ball up. I go up the striker. I win my first header. Blah, blah, blah. We get a corner. And then, and then for some reason, no one was marking me for the corner. And I scored in the 120th minute. It was the last kick of the ball. And it's like one of those you can't really make up. Uh, and obviously, I, had bear, I bore in mind that uh, it's a Hamilton rival. So that, you know, that was a little uh, nod to, 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 to the Aki's. Um, but overall, I think it was what it deserved. And that's the things I should be doing. I expect that of myself. Even that sounds like, oh, yeah, yeah, but that's easy to say now. But, you know, that's what I want to do. And as a defender, it's a great feeling def- defending and keeping clean sheets, but it's a really good feeling scoring too. So, you know, and that whether, and I didn't, I didn't train enough, nor did I inherit enough of my, the goal scoring instinct of my father. So, but it's still in my blood in terms of wanting to score. Uh, and that felt, that felt very, very good. When you're talking about your ambitions personally for the season and then uh, air as a team, obviously, to touch on Aki's a little, um, obviously, you know a lot of these players, you know Brian Rice, and obviously now you know the Championship League. What do you think Hamilton as a team and with these players you know are capable of doing in this season? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, uh, my, first it must be said, uh, the fact that Hamilton, uh, you know more of the club than I, than I do, but the fact that Hamilton, considering the resources, considering what they're up against, was up, was it seven seasons in a row? Yeah, was yeah. It, it, that's very impressive. Like, it must, be, it must be stated. And then, you know, the nature of football and stuff like that, things are going error now. Uh, now, uh, Aki's are down, yes, but maybe, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a chance for, for a new beginning and maybe fostering, you know, Hamilton always been very good at, at, at developing young talent. Maybe now in the championship, uh, these further talents will get the opportunity. I've saw a very young bench against Edinburgh City. Um, and so there's a lot of good talent, a lot of good footballers there. So uh, like I pointed to earlier, maybe there'll be chances more to, to have, you know, uh, control the games a bit more and, and, and for these players to show really what uh, good footballers they are. Um, but it's a young team, you know, and it's, it's a tough league as well. So you need to get ugly as well. Um, but, you know, uh, they're used to that, having having played in the Premiership and having always, pretty much always been the underdog as well. So if uh, if you guys can combine that, I think uh, you have you have good chances. But a lot of good young players there uh, coming up. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see uh, how it goes, and then um, yeah, excited to see how it goes when we play them as well. Even though you speak very highly of Aki's, and we appreciate that, you will be seeing this as an opportunity to put one over your former team, I'm guessing. What has been the message before this game um, from David Hopkins or from your captain? Um, what, is he, what have they been saying um, about playing Aki's? To be fair, like we've had, you know, games have gone, so we played on Tuesday and then Saturday yesterday and then Tuesday again. So we haven't really had uh, too much time to, to look towards it. But of course, 
um, we go there with the intention of winning um, because, uh, you know, it was a good result yesterday for you guys and stuff like that. But I think, you know, that will really set the, set the, set the agenda for, for how it looks in the group. And of course, I, you know, I feel like I have more, I feel like I have things. I like proving people wrong as well. And so, you know, of course, I want to, I want to get one over, over you guys because that's the nature of the things. That's how football is. Uh, I want to, I want to play well and I want to win. Um, and so, uh, we look there and, and we go with the intention of winning. Um, and we, it will be a tough game for sure, uh, away and with fans, which is great from both sides. Um, and we have the almost belief in ourselves to do so because I think, uh, we've got a, a a pretty strong team, a very good foundation. Um, and we looked there, but, you know, premiership last year, coming down champ now, uh, you know, a g good team we're playing, but uh, we definitely fancy ourselves. And just to go back, back the way slightly before we go into um, a more lighter topic, um, to mm -hmm. discuss your time at Hamilton a bit more, um, is there any sort of Funny moments or any moments which you could sort of help us relive, mm -hmm. um, or, or any sort of anything that happened to Hamilton that um, will just um, the fans would appreciate here. Uh, the good characters there, you know, I was I'm foreign, so and I like to dress up and stuff like that. And I remember always going to, I always remember coming into the changing room, and I, you know, I'd be dressing well, you know, I just like dressing well, or I'd go to my cafe after training and I have my different projects going on i remember players always saying where are you going i said i'm not going anywhere just dressing up mm. all right yeah, whatever whatever uh yeah but why don't you you know so also, and then there'll be a few times where scotty martin would would put on my clothes after <laughs> so i've been out training <laughs> i'd be out training and then he would put out his clothes and obviously he, him and i are two different physical uh people you know he's a bit smaller than me and he'd put on my clothes and come out like if I was out training, he'd he'd come out to the to the pitch and show it off, or like in the changing room, put on my clothes and kind of do a uh, into a catwalk there almost and put them on, which was funny because you know I like uh, I like dressing and standing out in that sense, and it was funny to see him in it because I was like, you have to see. I said, look how good you look in that. I say, why don't you go for that more? He said, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, got my trackies and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a character, man. Good, good, good man. What we were going to go do next was a sort of teammate section, but um, yeah. what we were going to end up with was, was we're going to ask you who your worst, worst dressed was in the team. So that's <laughs> no, no, no. I'm real. not giving him that. I'm not giving him. That. Like, maybe you can give everyone in the team that, so I don't have to take hanks to single anyone out. It's a very uh, uh, generic style, I'd say, when they go to training, and I've become one of them now. I always wear trackies now, so there you go. Uh, um, I don't know if you watched our last podca uh, podcast, but um, we, we asked that question to Sean Wan, uh, and yeah. in, in the name he gave was you. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. See, I, yeah, I take that as a compliment, you know, because then he's, then he's noticed. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah. Sean Wan. That, that was yeah. only a couple of weeks ago. We asked him, the question was... Um, out your full time at Aki's, if you could name name the player, and then we generic questions, and we came to worst dressed, and the name we gave was yourself, Marcus Fiorto. <laughs> yeah, pick out the farter, classic, going up to Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> Sean has potential too, you know, he's a good looking lad, you know, but he saves that when he goes out to town, so it's I, I get it. There's a matter of priority. <laughs> Longest in the shower, Mario. Yeah, who was the fastest? <laughs> the fastest. Ooh, um, you know what? First, first year I was there, Kieran McKenna suddenly tested fastest, and I said, w "I played with you for three years. No way, you're the fastest. That's not." He's like, "I, I, I I'm the fastest." I said, "No way." So if I, I he it was according to the test, but I still don't believe those tests. So um, I'd maybe be uh, like uh, Mikey Miller, Michael Miller. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was. And that was actually that was that not who Sean wants. Sean wants said the same. Yeah, Sean wants. Yeah. Sean Mott yeah. is deceiving me fast too, actually, which, you know, I'm surprised. Um, hard man. Hard man at Aki's. Oh, hard man. Uh, yeah, it got to be Scotty Martin. I'd give that to him. He's a hard man. i got to give it to him. Who was the best trainer? Who stood out in training? Oh, best trainer. Um, Scott McMahon worked, like, he wasn't, like, he he was a very, he just, it's cliche, but, like, he gave 100%. Like, he was, he trained well, and he's just a really really fit lad as well you know he he trained at a pretty good intensity um 
um, Regan was like, you know, he's got like this silk touch, you know, he could just be cruising in there. But uh, maybe give it to Scumac Man, I'd say, yeah. And to, to flip that on its head, who was the laziest? Who was the worst trainer? Who did you come in thinking you could have come in? <laughs> uh i don't know you know uh you know what he was a very good player like but he was a bit different in training he was a bit he wasn't he like he, i think he saved his like a uh, rhino brand so to speak for uh for the games because he was a bit different in training uh so maybe maybe that and he will say like fuck what the fuck are you saying you were shy as well like i can i'll <laughs> take that honestly it's okay it's okay my intentions were there uh, and he's gone on to, you know, he's got a good move in England now, so I th- I'm sure he can live with that. Uh, and we'll end on, who was the biggest character? Who stood out to you? Biggest character? Um, I mean, I like biggest character. Like, th- this, it's different because the Scottish lads are like, diff- they're, they're funny. They're like funny characters, like the Scotty Martins. Like, they were just, they just had, they were just, like completely different to me, uh, which I appreciated. Um, and then you had the English lads as well. Um, and then Mario had his way of communicating. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll give it to Scotty Martin again. He's like a character. I'll give that to him. I'll give that to him. Sorry, man. Brilliant. Marcus, this has been great. Thank you so much for joining us, mate. We really appreciate it. And I would wish you luck for Tuesday, but I won't. But, nah, nah, that's all right. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. <laughs> it was a ple- pleasure to join you, lads. It's always nice to reminisce a bit. And, uh, you know, Aki's where I started in Scotland. I'll always be thankful for that. And then, uh, and here we are, you know, two years later. So it's, uh, that's four points. It's a, it's a fun little journey to then uh, reconnect in the way we do.